Hello and welcome back to another coin video. So today we're looking at the Windish Coinage Treaty. And that was a, a treaty by the Hanseatic League uh, from 1379. So it's a little bit similar to the Rhenish Coinage Association in which what they wanted to do can you translate that into English because there is no English version? Uh, what they wanted to do is just create a unified currency area. But they had a little bit of a different in that the Rhenish Coinage Association was allowed to mint silver and gold coins uh, by the Holy Roman Empire. But this Rhenish Treaty Coinage Treaty did not have that privilege, although uh, some states were like Lübeck and also um, Munich were allowed to uh, mint coins by the Holy Roman Empire uh, because they had a free association. Uh, it gets a bit complex, we won't worry about talking about that. Okay, so it was founded in 1379, existed up to the 16th century, so about, I don't know, 15 something, 1530s, 1540s, they actually changed to the Tala and issued different coins. So the initial cities were Lübeck, Hamburg, Weismar, and Lewenberg, and these are all pretty much on the coast, and then later got Rostock, Star, Lund, Hanover, and it's based, it was based on a Lubeck mark, which I have not actually found a image of a Lubeck mark in the 1300s. But here's one that is uh, 1549, weighs about 19 grams. So that's what they based this on. And it's uh, 16 shillings. So I need to find out how much or a Fennig that is. So here we have the coinage of Lubeck. Uh, and here we have the initial coins that were issued. So one Witten equals four Fennigs. And it's probably about 16 Fennigs to one mark as far as I know. Uh, if we have a look at this, 16 shillings. So, how much is a fennig? So, they don't really have uh, any fennig coins in the currency that was issued later. So, yeah, it's been either 15 or 32. So, uh, Lubeck issued different coins. So, here's one session. So, this is six fennigs. And they just put the coat of arms. So it's a bit different than the Rhenish coinage, in which they had the coat of arms of the issuing states all on the coins. In this case, they, they did not do that. Although, you know, this one with them for 1400 pretty much copied uh, the design characteristics of the Rhenish. So obviously, they might have been inspired by the Rhenish. And uh, oh, there is another one. It's uh, down below. In This is mainly in Switzerland. And originated pretty much at the same time. So obviously the economic development of Germany at this time had progressed. In which they wanted a currency like the Euro. So they can easily uh, form the functions of an economy over a wide area. So they just wanted to make the economic situation a lot easier for people to manage. So instead of having different currencies all over the place with different weights and different denominations, they just wanted one currency. But the coins issued by different states with their own mark on it, but the design's all similar, so 
if you just look at it very quickly, you, you like um you no know, like the euro coin. You now you look at it very quickly. You see, you see, this is an it, Italian coin, uh, but the German coins are this side's the same. Finnish coins, this side's the same, just a different image. So when you're using them in bulk lots, you really, you know, it's not going to be confusing. They might have a slightly different design, but the denomination is the same. So that's why they wanted here. So they had the Witten, so the Witten of Four Fennigs, uh, Dice, Sessig, have the denominations, various shillings. So obviously, all these places could actually issue coins made of silver and their denominations and some states could actually issue gold although gold was not a requirement okay the symbol of these so symbol was a six pointed star let me just reduce my head okay you got a six pointed star and this is the cross although if we look at the coins so here we have coins of a humbug so we as you can see humbug did issue gold coins but they just issued it with their own coat of arms so they didn't actually put the coat of arms of every states on it well that's that's not really the humbug called it coat of arms uh, so let's see up so humbug so we have the earlier coins and then we have the written has the Hamburg coat of arms in uh, this intricate design. And sometimes see it doesn't actually have what is actually written, so a lot of the times it's actually a bit confusing. And this one is 1.29 grams. So it's a little bit different than a, a vice fennig which is about two grams so these coins had a different weight and written so we've got lots of different designs and later on so 1500s they did issue the coat of arms of the various states and on most coins i don't see that design element of the six-pointed star then we have seshlings issued uh, with uh, this is a star so obviously they increase the number of points on the stars because a lot of our states actually joined so and doubles they're sitting half mark obviously with the different coat of arms on it so that's definitely a copy of the Rhinish currency union so they really just wanted to follow that and later on in in the uh, about 1550 or something like that, they, they all adopted the Tala, so the Rhineland and the Hanseatic League. So, if you're not too familiar with this, it's actually Northern Europe. And basically, the best way you can look at it is the actual map on Wikipedia. So, I'm going to use Wikipedia a lot in these articles because this is the best place to get information. Some of it might be incorrect, but a lot of it will be so if we have a look it does include part small areas of sweden doesn't include denmark at all it includes the coastal area of uh the baltic states where the german states that uh immigrated and set up colonies on it includes prussia which is the same they set up colonies but this originally was a language related to lithuanian and uh latvian so it was, it was a baltic language we had a lot of slavs here and a lot of those were pushed out over time but as you can see you've got pomerania you've got brandenburg you've got frisiland you've got the rhineland rhineland's actually south of here so we've got like i think it's munster Brunswick. Holstein, so Schleswig is not actually included. 
And in the later part of the 15, 1600s, this area is pretty much occupied by Sweden. So that's a Hanseatic League. And basically, it's just all these states getting together and just making trade a lot easier, as well as defense against uh, probably not the other states, just from criminal elements that want to uh, actually come and. Well, just rob people. And we see that set up criminal organizations. Well, a lot of people would say a lot of the governments here are probably criminal organizations. So this is Lubeck. So we have the Vittens. So as you can see, it has the Lubeck double headed eagle. And you know, you've got 1.2a, 1.18. So there is no uh, and then you got Sechlin's 1.69. So basically, if it's 1.2 grams per Witten, uh, pretty much you've got 0.3 grams for one penny. So this is 6, so you need 2.6. Uh, so these, these are coins, yeah, they don't really correspond with the the same weight system, although that's pretty normal for when you actually have not got a refined technological advance of computers that are able to uh, create weights that are very specific in the, how much they weigh. Then another session, so this is one gram, so obviously uh, this is based on the design of the coat of arms, which indicates the actual denomination. So, oh, and that's very interesting. And then you got Talasa, 1570. And then you got the gold coins. Okay, so here's a one mark from 1549. Obviously, it's 150 years later. So the design's a bit different, but it's about 20 grams. Okay, then, oh, Luenberg. So, look at that. That's a beautiful coin. Sorry, I'm getting a bit distracted. This is uh, the Tuller series, but this place issues a lot of coins of moons on it. And, uh, you know, I just want to get that. They, they, they probably cost a few thousand dollars, so uh, I'm just dreaming here. So, anyway, Luenberg, we have with the coat of arms. Then we have Sesslings. About two grams, so that's how much they probably should weigh. Uh, and then we have earlier ones. So none of these are dated, as you can see. There's ND, so no date, but so these dates are, are, are approximate. They're probably based on archaeological finds as well as any surviving manuscripts from the time period. Obviously, that the coat of arms down there. And here's another, that's the actual coat of arms, so it's a line for Nuremberg. And then we just have a cross, cross line. So obviously, yeah, they just uh, issue coins, silver coins, the coat of arms. And these gold coins are probably based on the Iranish coinage system because they're gold gurdens, which are developed in the Rhineland. Okay, then we, okay, we'll look at that last. So, here we have Hamburg again. I think I've shown that before. All right, the dementia is some bad feedback. So, here we have the coat of arms. One written, well, though, it should be probably Sessling with that coat of arms. Sessling. Okay, obviously the design changed over the 150, 200 years of these coins we use. Doppel session, so that, that's probably a 12 mark. Have a look. Uh -huh. Two shillings, 24 mark. I'll be off. And these have the city coat of arms. And on the back we just have Madonna and Child. So you can actually increase the size. This one's been double struck, so, which is pretty normal. 
Although it, it will be classed as an error coin, it doesn't add value because double strike coins in the medieval period are very common. Okay, you got half mark, you got one mark. 1506, so it's about 130 years since it actual development. And we have free coat of arms. This is Lubeck. This is probably Lundberg, and that's probably Weismar. And then we have Madonna and Child again. So she actually occurs quite a lot on coins, and Hungarians issued Madonna and Child on coins quite common. Okay, Weismar. So we've got the old coin, Bractiat coins, which is single faced with the image on both sides. Okay, so then we've got the Witten. So they're not Witten in German, it's v Witten. So W is pronounced as a V. Okay, so these ones we do have the symbol of the monetary union. So the six pointed star in a cross. And so I'm going to just add the cross of that six pointed star. Later on, we have the same image, or it's a lot of times that they initiate a six pointed star. And then later on, they got rid of that and just issued the coat of arms on both sides. Okay, this howl looks a bit weird. That actually looks scary. And they did issue some sessions, but another thing we should notice is that this catalogue, or any catalogue, it doesn't have um, all of the coins. Okay, OBS is not working that well. Okay, so basically, oh, there you go. Look at my face, look at my face. Do I look fugly? Fugly, yes. Okay, then we have the Tala. So obviously 1570, this currency system was definitely in. And obviously, it was issued up into uh, the German mark was issued. So these designs don't correspond uh, to what we're looking at. So, okay, sexlings, sexlings, six pfennigs. That's always been the same in any currency system. So basically, uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit distracted. I actually like collecting German coins. I don't know why. Maybe it's my sick hail me. Okay, so then we've got Rostock. So Rostock was part of um, Mecklenburg. So basically, they were a city that was allowed to issue their own coins. So they've got the coat of arms. Obviously, they issue coins under this monetary union, although they were not an independent state. And the same with Lundberg. And quite a few others. So we've got the actual coins there, so they only ever issue Rittens, although, once again, obviously, if only four coins, and if you look at the references, obviously there should, up until this time, there should be about 300 coins in here. So, a lot of these coins are missing. And I don't know what Jesse, the reference is. Obviously, it's a, a type of reference that is for uh, coins of this period. Okay, and then we have the Tala. So, is issued from 1520 in Bavaria. Oh, no, not Bavaria, Bohemia. So, that's the current Czech Republic. Uh, and what well, a first then was the Gul Grushin. Uh, its longest sleeve was a Reichtala from 1524. Okay, Holy Roman Empire. Uh, so this gives us information. Okay, first silver coinage standardized in the by Holy Roman Empire is so a gold Grushin in 1524. And then the Imperial Minting, uh, the Cologne Mark of 29. 1234, so it's a bit higher than the 19 grams that we saw before. However, the longest surviving standard was the Reichtaler, defined in 1566. 
uh, one ninth of Cologne mark. So you just take that, divide it by nine, or twenty five point nine eight grams. So it's basically yeah, fifteen about fifteen seventy is when yeah, that pretty much take it over. So then we got uh, so Lubeck marks. And there is a tuller there from 1549. So I'm not too sure if that's the actual tuller. I need to confirm that. Although it's on the MA shop, so it probably is. This one says proof. So it's probably a restrike. Okay, so then what I have done on Numista is I have. Let me go at the top. Okay, put Vitten in the catalogue, but you need to put it in, you know, circulating coins, value Vitten. If you put it up here in the search catalogue, it's not going to work. So we've got a lot of different states. So here we have Aklam issuing the extra coins, and that's where we get the free drapes coming down. I actually quite like that coat of arms. Then we have um, Brunswick, Wolfenbutu. Also issued these coins. So a lot of these states weren't actually in the Union itself. But at this time period, you know, a lot of places, if they wanted to issue coins, they wouldn't issue their own designs because no one would accept it. I probably think it's just counterfeit. Uh, they just copy a design. Obviously, because people put their own coat of arms on it, but they kept the same initial design it was accepted around the place so you can see there's a lot of different coins that were issued then we have Flemsburg so all these are in Northern Europe Feud land so I don't know where a lot of these places are so how you can find out is uh, just look for it oh it's got Battle Feud land look at that uh, where was that? Fjordland, Prussia. Okay, so that is cur currently in Poland, Lovdinsk. So that's where that place is. Okay, so let me get rid of these sites. Okay, then we have Moyen. So, I don't even know what that is. Never heard of the place before. If we can look on Google Maps, we can see it's in, uh, I don't know, it's in Mecklenburg. So, they issue coins. Obviously, it's a bit small. So, then we got Greifsfeld, Hamburg. Obviously, they issued a lot. Hanover, they also issued some. Then we got it's a whole Jiva Kiel. Nah, I'm not surprised that they did. They're a coastal city that issued uh, was a big trading organization, and they also had the six pointed star. Lubeck, obviously, because everything was based on Lubeck. Lumberg, yeah. Then we have New Brandenburg, New Brandenburg, so New Brandenburg. Then all this slow. Obviously, they issued it. Prachen. And as you can see, the weights. Oh, that's a quarter. I'm not surprised about that. Um, Pomerania. Dutch or Pomerania. Issued the Vittens in the later period. And as you can see, uh, a lot of these were issued later on. This is this is our, our Swedish Pomerania, so obviously they wouldn't have abided by the Holy Roman Empire conventions. Obviously, the value was about half, so that would have been a different currency system. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, Rostock. So here's the coins from Rostock, Sternberg. Uh, Stalund, 
Visita Heda Sam Caravans the other one. Uh, oh, I need to look those two up. Okay, so go around. Yeah, I want to look up that city. I'll look it up later. Okay, then we have Tlepto. Uh, Weissmar. Weissmar's bit in, bit down south. So, uh, obviously this currency. Uh, and that's basically it. So it penetrated quite far. South for the time period. In which uh, travelling times actually. Quite long. So we've got Aachen. So where's Aachen? Anklam. Obviously pronounced it. I screwed that up. Oh yeah, so it's. Uh, where's Rostock? So, Aklam. So, this is probably the extreme west of the actual period. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh... Is the other one? No. Aklam. Okay, so these ones are on the same coast, but. They're actually a fair way from each other. So we don't have a measurement there. Uh, opening Google Maps. Screw you. Okay, so. These should be pretty old cities. Yeah, looking at the measurement, probably 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, probably 60, 70 kilometers from each other. Yeah, fair distance away. They've got this place in the middle so obviously they issued the same coins trade same trading partner so i wouldn't be surprised if this one actually issued those coins as well and we'll see if uh yeah grace is that grace failed yeah grace failed yeah they also issued those coins as well so pretty much anyone on this coast uh anyone around here Anyone in this northern part, pretty sure, surprising that Bremen didn't issue those coins, but, you know, they were uh, pretty independent. So you got Luenburg, they issued coins, Hanover, so pretty much anyone up here who was issuing coins would have issued some type of a uh, coin in that system. Although around here, they were part of the uh, uh, system. So, I'm surprised they didn't issue coins. So, we need to look up uh, coins from the eh, Netherlands, see what happened at that time period. So, uh, the Netherlands, Netherlands, uh, Dutch states. Yeah. See what, yeah, so they were issuing coins at the same time. Groot, Groot. Good, good. So obviously, yeah, they were not issuing coins of this currency union, <clears throat> which, yeah, doesn't really surprise me. That Dutch like to be independent, so they're issuing dollars and all that stuff, which are based on a different weight system. <sighs> Sorry, I'm nearly dying. Okay, uh, Groot, or the Groot, uh, Groot, yep, so the Dutch didn't issue it, so, let me see, what the people of Bremen were doing, so, German states once again, and uh, we'll just see if they, people of Bremen, if they were, no, we are, we are independent, we do not follow what they do. Brandenburg. So obviously in Germany, currently on Wikipedia, they have about 14 to 15,000 coins. And I would say that 
excludes most of them. Okay, you got Schwaren, which is one for his 60th. And you've got more Schwarens, Schwarens, Schwarens. And the smallest coin is one Schwaren. So obviously, the it's not that many coins. Or maybe I need to take it off. Circulating coin. See, see what happens there. Okay. Yep. No, it doesn't. So obviously they kept their own currency system that they had. Uh, and they didn't adopt that unified currency into the Hala. Even, even after then they still just kept using their own currency system. Hmm. No. Let's see what the Gruten way. Obviously. Yeah, this could be equivalent to the uh one Vitten. So yeah, about one yeah, one point two. That's a slightly higher one point four. Uh, well, gluten later on. Okay, yeah, so obviously they didn't worry about adopting this currency system, they just kept uh, being independent. Although, to gluten looks like you could have actually uh, satisfied that demand. Yeah, so 1.2 grams could be actually one Witten. Although it does get confusing because you've got all a large time period in which you know different people issued different coins and some of them would have diluted the coins, reduced the weight, increased the weight. You know, and people, you know, you got a hundred year period, people at the start of that period and the end of that period, they have different concepts of currency that they're supposed to be using. Although now we're just looking back in time. Uh, we can see all the differences that have been over that time period. Uh, yeah, but basically now, if I was to go back a hundred years' time to 1923, yeah, I would have a different concept of currency. So obviously, we don't view currency as silver. So going back, you know, 1823, you know, we have banknotes. So if we just use coins. So 1823, so we use coins, but they also had tokens, I would have accepted those. Went back to 1723, I uh, would have had a different concept because uh, obviously base metal coins were not really accepted, you would have had silver. So if you gave me a large bronze or coin, I probably would have said, no, that's not currency. In which now, Basically, view currency is uh, banknotes and digital, which is very interesting. So anyway, that is the uh, Vendish Coinage Treaty. So one of the three earlier treaties to unify the currency so it can be accepted over uh, different uh basically countries at the time although there was no i don't think there was a concept of uh nationality so there was just a uh, language and culture which are separated people and obviously people were excluded or included based on that so anyway i hope this helped you with uh, uh, learning about currencies so next one i'm gonna do is this rappen mundsbund so rappen is what they use in switzerland for their base denominations of centimeters so obviously this one is uh, for switzerland probably areas around in uh, germany and austria as well so thank you and have awesome coin and banknote collecting time